here we are in the cottage garden. It's July. It's not a particularly warm day in July. It hasn't been a warm summer at all. And, but the herbs are growing and a lot of them have been ready to harvest already. We've already been harvesting them or they're getting really close. So I wanted to give you a quick tour and show you what it looks like in the cottage garden in July. All right. Well, I was just trying to catch up with picking my chamomile that we'll use all winter for chamomile tea. I've gotten a little behind on it and some of it is a little overdone. You can see we've already picked the oregano and we've started harvesting the thyme and the peppermint. So one of the most challenging things in a uh, food preservers year and calendar is that a lot of things come ripe at the same time Especially if you're living in an area like this with a really short growing season So I've learned it's really important to stretch out your harvest as long as you can and start harvesting things as soon as you can in the season So that you don't have a big glut and a big crunch at the end of the season to harvest so right now I don't have a lot of veggies to harvest. The fruit isn't quite in yet. So this is an, a great time to be taking full advantage of all the herbs out in the garden and getting them in. So let's go start at the beginning of the garden. And I'll show you what we've got going on. You can see that it has really, really grown up over the last month, really. It has gotten huge and it just keeps growing. All right, so over here in the very front, we have some delphinium back here and tucked in are my brand new arbor roses. They're just getting settled and getting their uh, roots going here. And look at this, you guys, this is yarrow and it is so happy that it has just grown and grown and it's about to head out. Now I love yarrow, it's one of the herbs that I love having in the garden. It does grow wild in many parts of the United States and across the world, but it's really, really good to have it on hand. It's great for things like flus and fevers, but what I love it for the most is for stopping bleeding really, really quickly. This will stop bleeding very fast. Um, it's really helpful for things like nosebleeds. It's really helpful for things like cuts. It's just a great herb to have on hand somewhere near the house in case you need a quick first aid trip to it to get some bleeding to stop. Let's see, you can see that the lavender is just getting about ready to harvest too for the first time. Now I would expect to get several harvests out of this plant and um, have it on hand for whatever I want to use it for. Mostly right now I'm going to use it for scent. I have plenty of lavender stored for other uses. So I like having this on hand for things like little potpourri dishes or um, sachets to put in linen drawers or things like that. Okay, let's see, we've got the Korean hyssop here also known sometimes as a Korean mint. It kind of has a root beer type flavor. I tend to just use this for drinks in the summer. And in fact, I don't use it as much as I would like to. So I'm contemplating taking this guy out as pretty as these leaves are. I just don't use it all that much. And I might be able to put the space to something else. Now down here, I have some brand new baby whorehound that I put in. This is the white whorehound. It's got a little trimmings here. Somebody just weed whacked for me. Um, and this is, of course, really good for respiratory issues. You've heard of whorehound candy. Well, it becomes because they're really good for throat and for lung issues. Now, speaking of lung issues, right back here, these huge plants are this elecampane. And that is a wonderful, wonderful respiratory health herb. You use the roots of this, and I don't know if you can see, but tucked back in there is one of the farm cats, very happily asleep. And hopefully he's finding a few of the gophers that we've been having problems with out here. <laughs> All right. 
here we have this giant catnip. It is doing really well. Catnip is really good for more than just cats. Um, it might be why the cat is hanging so close because they love getting into this plant and rolling around. But the catnip is really, really good for babies, for upset tummies, for restlessness, for colds, and even for flus and fevers. So it's a really good herb to have, especially if you have young children and you need to be able to treat them for some of the common complaints. Another one that I would not live without is my lemon balm. We have already harvested this plant probably three times. And you can see it just keeps coming back and coming back stronger every single time. It's very, very happy. And this though is such a valuable herb to have on hand, especially if you have things in, like if you're prone to um, herpes outbreaks like cold sores, or shingles or anything like that in your home. It's great for helping with chicken pox. It's also really good to calm people down. So it's really good if you find yourself feeling a little anxious or a little stressed, lemon balm is great. In fact, even the aromatherapy from the lemon balm is really good. So you can go and just kind of rough up your leaves a little bit and just stick your nose right down into that plant and you actually instantly feel calmer. It's a great plant and I love having it around and it tastes really, really good. Okay, let's move on. See, here's the peppermint. I went ahead and picked that already, gave it a really strong harvest because it is very healthy. I know it looks a little rough right now, but it is going to come back in all its glory in just a few weeks. It'll be really fast. Now, my valerian is having a little bit of a hard time right now and that's because the gophers have decided that they love valerian so we're working on uh, helping the barn cats find the gophers here um, but they're struggling a little bit they still have a, a few roots intact so i'm going to go ahead and let it be but there is a lot of valerian out here so i'm not in danger of losing all my valerian by any means now tucked back here i've got my hollyhocks some of them and I have a little harvest of fava beans, and those are not too far from ready. I kind of tucked them in. Of course, the hops have just gone crazy this year. If you guys remember, last year I put these plants in, and about this time last year, they were maybe kind of starting to get over the main railing here. This year, they are all the way up past the top balcony, so they're really growing this year. They haven't set their flowers yet, but it's not long. Okay, throughout the whole garden, we have a couple of different things like the echinacea and the bee balm. So we have a lot of these guys just kind of spreading and doing their thing, waiting for when I need them. Now, the bee balm or the monarda is a great plant because it's really antiviral and antifungal and antibacterial. It's kind of anti-everything. So it's really, really good for the skin. So when I make the bag balm for the cow, for the milk cow, I make it predominantly out of bee balm or monarda and calendula, which is just starting to flower over here. We're getting our very, very first calendula flowers. Now I'm gonna let the first ones probably start to go to seed so I can make sure I get a really good seed for our next year's crop, but then I will start picking them. And you want to pick them, you wanna harvest them when they're sticky. You want sticky calendula flowers. Tucked in here, I have some bread seed poppies all over the garden. These are gonna make big seed heads after they're beautiful and pretty. <laughs> and then they're gonna make the big seed heads that we can harvest poppy seeds from. So we can have poppy seeds in our muffins. Okay, we finally got the bean teepee up and we have some runner beans started on that. It'll take them a while to get going, but um, we had to fortify it. If you remember last year, they got so big and so happy that they pulled the teepee straight over. So we really had to dig it in a lot more this year. This is what happens when I build things instead of Josh, <laughs> is they fall over. But I didn't have the heart to ask him to do one more thing on his list. So I went ahead and did it again this year. Okay, and we're back to the calendula, or I'm sorry, to the chamomile and the thyme, the oregano. And look at these guys. These have just gone wild this year. Th these are the hollyhocks. And if you remember, um, hollyhocks are completely interchangeable medicinally 
for marshmallow, which means that anything you would use a marshmallow for, you can use hollyhock for. Now, every single part of a hollyhock plant is edible. The roots, the leaves, the stems, the flowers, the whole thing. So they also make a really good, what we call pot herb or, you know, leaf, leafy green that you can cook with. The thing that you have to know is it's very much like okra in that it's very mucilaginous, which is its main medicinal property. So if you cook with it, it does thicken things and it gives them maybe kind of a slimy texture. So you do need to be aware of that. Besides that, it's really good. And of course it's gonna be beautiful as it flowers. All right, now we've got one of the apothecary roses just starting to flower. It's been a little damp, so it's not the happiest. Some of these blooms aren't looking super happy right now because it's been such a damp spring. We went ahead already and pulled out the Napa cabbage and made a lot of kimchi from that. All right, and the other apothecary rose is over here. And that one's doing much better. It's much happier this year. Okay, and then we're getting into the more medicinal so, or the food section of the garden. So you can see we have some broccolis tucked in and around. Now the interesting thing about broccolis when they're tucked into something like a cottage garden, and this is true of most plants, is that if you were to have all these broccolis in a row up in the main crop garden, you'd probably be struggling with different insects at this point. But because they're spaced out and there's so many different flowers and plants, it kind of, um, I don't want to say confuses the insects, but at the same time, it's not as easy just to hop from plant to plant to plant. And so it breaks up the insect pattern. So that means that we have a lot, um, a lot fewer, many fewer? <laughs> we have fewer insects down here in the cottage garden. Um, on things like this broccoli that would be particularly insect prone. And so this is a really good thing to remember about polycultures instead of monocultures. When you mix up the planting and you mix all these different plants in there, it has a lot of benefits. And one of them is this effect on insects that it's just not as easy for the insects to go from plant to plant to plant right down one row. And so you have a lot less of a <laughs> a lot less of an insect problem. We have another barn cat over here, just very, very happy. I don't know if you can see Bob over here having a blast. He does not have a gopher, but he did last week. Oh, he does have a gopher. Yay, Bob. All right. Bob just got extra points in my book today. Okay, so you can see we've got the, this is the Good King Henry. And I've really left this alone. This is the perennial green. And it's a great spinach type plant. Um, its real benefit is that it's a perennial. So that means it's first up in the spring. It's really early in the spring to come up and be able to be harvestable. And um, it just is gonna come back year after year. So this year I've kind of left it alone. I haven't harvested it very much. So it gets a really solid root base. It's also putting off its seeds. So I'm letting it self sow right here in this area to help really increase and strengthen this patch. So next spring, I will have greens first thing in the spring. I'm really excited about that. Okay, the parsley over here is looking really good beneath the sorrel that is also self-sowing right now. And then over on this side, we've got all sorts of different things going on. We've got the borage plants, we have some dill, We've got the Caucasian mountain spinach back there, which is another uh, type of perennial green. It's a vine. It's a hardy vine, so it's going to go through the winters we have here in North Idaho. And I'm going to be able to pick that next year. And um, The flavor on it has been really good, but again, because this is the first full year for this plant, I'm going to go ahead and leave it and let it really establish, establish itself. Chervil's looking good. There's little bachelor button plants coming up all over through this garden, as well as the poppies and the borage and all sorts of flowers. And then we're down here at the cut flower end. And if you guys have seen any of the other cottage garden tours that I've done, you'll know that 
I have a really hard time cutting my pretty flowers out of the garden because I feel like they'll just last longer and make my garden pretty. So I created a whole section of my garden that is just for flowers for cutting. Their entire purpose here is so that I can cut them and bring them into the house. And that kind of gives me mental permission, I guess, to cut them and bring them in. So I love having a little cottage garden or cutting garden down here. We've got asters, we have cosmos, there's sunflowers. Boy, I can't even remember bachelor buttons. We have so many different things in here that I can't even remember everything that I put in here right now. But um, they are getting going now and with just a little bit more sunshine, we're gonna have a lot of beautiful flowers. Now, right on the other side of the fence is Josh's instant green garden. If you haven't watched that video, you can see how to make this instant garden really quickly. These guys are a little bit slow growing right now, but again, we've just had a slow spring with lots of cool weather. Um, and these are lettuces and all sorts of salad plants that we will be harvesting really, really soon. Okay, you guys, if you haven't put any herbs into the ground yet, it is not too late. You can still get plants, you can still get seeds, and you can get them into the ground to start your own medicinal cottage garden. Take care.